Hey there, my friends. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I want to welcome you to the very first episode of Keeping It Real, Dealing with the bullshit area of life. Now, in today's video, you're going to find out who I am, who this lovely lady sitting across from me is. You're going to find out exactly what bullshittery in life means. And we're going to talk about some general specifics on how you can recognize what bullshittery is in your own life. Now, make sure that you have subscribed to this episode and you've hit that little bell there on and liked it and subscribed whatever channel, social media platform you happen to be watching this on, because that's important. This is going to notify you every week when we put out a new show. And make sure you watch all the way to the end so that you find out how to reach us personally. Because we are doing this to help you. Simply because we know what it's like to deal with the bullshittery of life. We know how to get past the bullshittery of life. And if this is your first time even hearing the word bullshittery, welcome to the club. <laughs> All right. My name is Lynn. I am a professional fairy godmother. And what I do is I help people have an abundant dream life and a professional life that they absolutely unequivocally love. And this here is my beautiful, beautiful counter co-host, Shiraz, the professional cosmic guide. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, lovely? Well, thank you, Lynn, for that beautiful opening, and I appreciate it. I'm so glad to be doing this with you and to helping all the, and reaching out to all the beautiful people that are listening to this and watching it. Um, I am a professional cosmic guide. I have been an intuitive for 46 years. I was born this way and decided to make it my friend. There you go. So here we are. I'm certified in NLP. You can read on my website more specifics. It is my greatest joy though, to see the beautiful inner spirit that each of you carries with you and to facilitate and bring you to the threshold that you realize your true divinity. That is what I love about my work. And that is powerful, my friends. It truly, truly is. All right, so a little bit about me. If you haven't figured out yet, my name is Lynn. I am a professional fairy godmother. Like I said earlier, I am an abundance coach. Um, and I am a dream life coach and a successful small business coach. Now, what makes me a little bit different than someone else, you might ask? I've been there, guys. I've walked in your shoes. Um, I have the certifications behind my name from a scientific standpoint to take you down any rabbit hole you want to go down. However, that's probably not the conversation you and I need to be having. The conversation <laughs> you and I need to be having is what exactly is bullshittery? Now, my dear friend Shiraz and I have been talking about the bullshittery in our lives, oh, for over a year now. Oh, yes. <laughs> and bullshittery is one of those things. It kind of creeps in like a fungus in the dead of night. <laughs> and it kind of invades every single area of your life, right? It invades your heart. It invades your mind. It invades your business. It invades your body and your health. It invades your relationships, your bank account. I mean, you stop and think about it. It's, it's a pretty invasive virus, truthfully. And it is, and it creep. It will creep through your life so slowly and so insidiously that one morning when you wake up and you go, and you're going to have this moment if you haven't already, my friends, this is what she means and they mean by bullshittery. Right? So let's all get on the same page here. Let's define what bullshittery is. Dear Shiraz, tell me, my cosmic guide friend, <laughs> What exactly is bullshittery to you? Bullshittery is people who come along and try and nibble at your time, mm -hmm. who want to take control of your life in very subtle ways to 
take over your time and your life. Um, it's also being gas gaslighted by narcissists. Well, that's one aspect of it, yes. And gaslighted by those, we'll just say, that do not have your best interest at heart. Sociopaths, psychopaths, manipulative liars, narcissists, and more. And we'll get into all of that here later on. But <laughs> there's also a complete another level of bullshittery. Now, wouldn't you say that bullshittery is the chronic application of things you cannot control that go wrong in your life? 100%. Okay. And even though you strive to do the best that you possibly can, it's like um, this current thing here that we've got going on in the world, and we're not going to name it by name because we don't want to get banned or censored <laughs> or anything else. Yes. Okay. <laughs> But everybody's aware of what's going on currently when you're watching this, wherever you may be watching this. <laughs> and that is a chronic thing because it has now crept into every aspect of our life. That's just one example. Can you give me another example? It doesn't have to be personal, but something that you could think of off the top of your head of an example of how bullshittery creeps into every aspect. I'm going to go a little personal because the roles, the role, having the whole idea of being isolated and staying at home and being cut off from the things that bring us together as families, as communities, like where we have to limit our gatherings and being told more and more, losing control of our lives from, from these external forces. For me, I'm a very social person. And all my board meetings are now done via Zoom. I'm on several committees in the community. They're all done via Zoom. And so that the context of actual human connection and communication in, and that humanity is being lost. And to me, that's one of the biggest aspects of bullshittery when we lose our humanity. And you're right. When we lose our humanity, when we lose that interconnection between each of us, and we go from being a energetic hive collective, for lack of better terminology, because we all know I'm a sci-fi nut, okay? Um, <laughs> we go from that interjected of hive collective mindset into just being an individual, alone, no connection, no touch, which is a huge issue. I mean, just coming from a psychological standpoint, that type of bullshittery over a long period of time is going to have massive ramifications that cannot be predicted at this time. What we are currently seeing is a rise in suicide rates. We are seeing a rise in things like schizophrenia. We are seeing a rise in mania, depression as a whole, all over the world. This in unprofound, systematic rates, okay? Because of this chronic bullshittery. And guys, understand that this is just one, one example, okay? Um, I'm going to give another example here to kind of get us off that topic. So we just yeah. have to stay safe and be careful. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> um, but another example. And, you know, if you grew up in something like this, you can definitely relate. If you didn't, then consider yourself blessed but you have a parent who is a massive control figure control freak and authoritarian <clears throat> excuse me everything has to be done my way when i say how i say and you growing up see this and try to do it any other way and you get knocked back down Hopefully not physically, but you're going to get knocked back down at least verbally, emotionally, okay, spiritually. And um, you're going to get taught that you have to do it a certain way. And free thinking, being creative, doing things a different way because it's more logical to you. Because remember, we all walk our own path, our own journey. Gets beaten out of us, gets taken out of us gets removed from us, 
I don't know how else to put that. Well, it very... gets programmed gets programmed out of us because if you look at the mm -hmm. standardized, it started years ago with the standardized testing in the school system where it was not about authentic creative thinking. It was about regurgitating the information so that you're passing your levels so you graduate, which is the ultimate goal, right? Let's right. get you out of high school. Let's say that we have that we have the best and we're, we won't get into educational politics, no, no. but <laughs> you know what we're talking about here. You guys have we're... all experienced it, okay? You got kids in school now, you're experiencing it. So, so <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that it's is pretty... going to be another topic for another day, farther down the season in bullshittery. Okay, I agree. We there's a lot in a lot of depth in that, but it's a big part of bullshittery because the bullshittery starts from the time that we're born. It starts from the time that we're told how to how to use our manners. That we're told how to eat with a knife, fork, spoon, etc. Right. So it starts with, from the time that we get that we're out of the womb. It has and been here actually we... shown that we hear the word no over 30,000 times in the first year of life alone. Can you imagine? I mean, and most people don't even realize that. But that's what you're programming into you. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And I know I've said it around my granddaughter. I've said it to my daughter. I'm guilty of this. And didn't realize the impact it was having. But there are times that you have to say no to keep them safe. There are times, but if I know with my own kids going, I went through parenting classes every year to stay away from the bullshittery. Mm -hmm. It's like, I would say, please stop and listen great tip that is and yeah. and get their attention but i i did not want to be programming my children and putting them further into this matrix of bullshittery that we have created as a society oh yeah and this it, it goes back several generations we're gonna say from at least seven i don't know maybe more um because we've gotten to a point as a society and the bullshittery that is in our society, that it is taken on a brand new level. Um, <clears throat> what it is, is we no longer think for ourselves. We ragtag follow all this misinformation without doing our own research, you know, just to fit in. We don't want to stand out. We don't need to be happy. We don't need to think. And that... That, my friends, I think is the biggest amount of bullshittery that we currently have in our lives. Excuse me for a moment while I get up on my soapbox, please. But I got to say this since it's been brought up. Okay? If you currently are going through an evasive type of bullshittery in your life caused by stuff you don't understand, caused by things that are out of your control then it is time to do something productive and step out of that rut that you have got yourself into. You need to take a stand and make an action plan and get the hell out of whatever it is that has got you stuck in this rut, this way of thinking, this lifestyle. Think for yourselves, guys. You're not a mindless drone. You are not an automaton. Now, me being the sci-fi geek that I am, <laughs> I'm going to flat out tell you, that there are robots out there that think more than humans. Think about this, guys. If a robot has already replaced you think-wise and you don't believe me, you go check out Sophia and some of the interactive conversations that she's had. Okay? She is a self-learning AI machine, and she is not the only one out there. We got to stand up and we got to start thinking for ourselves and we need to be creative and we need to ditch the bullshittery in our lives on every single level. One way we can start, and I just have to jump because it, one thing I'm aware of, I'm completely detoxed from sugar. It took such a long time. But what I learned in this process 
is that every our food is programmed to keep us sheeple. Mm-hmm. Oh, everything in our lives is programmed. Everything is. They put in ingredients that make our minds more malleable, open to suggestion, and keep us in the keep us caged up. And we're, they're so busy feeding us things that they that we think tastes good or or you know like a little bit's not going to hurt us. Well, that's not true, because once you take one bite. You're hooked. You're hooked. And I admit, I have not won that war against sugar yet, my sister. I admit that. I, I praise you for winning that because you got kudos and gold stars. I, I personally haven't won that war. So, you know, thumbs up to you. But you're absolutely <laughs> correct. Okay. Um, even though I have cut back tremendously on my sugar intake and my processed food intake, and I am trying to eat healthier more organic, more natural, Mm -hmm. the damage to my body has been done because it has been for such a long period of time, it has now contaminated my cells on a DNA level. Exactly, exactly. You've experienced this too. I know in your battle to get healthy and to help remove some of the bullshit from your heart, mind, body, and soul that goes on in your life, shall we say, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> have struggled in this war too because our society is not built. It is not in supportive of doing this. And, you know, I want to thank you for coming on here and doing this show with me because I know we've been talking about it for a good minute. A long minute. <laughs> a, a good long minute, yeah. And there's been some things in both of our lives that have not permitted it but i also know that you believe in divine timing just like i do and right here and right now we are getting the world out about bullshittery in people's lives and it's time to stop it it's time to keep it real to break it down for what it is and to tell the truth or at least our versions of the truth you don't have to like it right you don't have to accept it you don't have to keep it as your version of the truth by gone we don't but need at you. least at the very least, though, to get you, to get everyone listening to this, thinking for themselves, mm-hmm. making decisions from what is your soul's purpose, where are you supposed to be, how are you supposed to get there, and the bullshittery, quite frankly, is is locking doors all around you. It's and keeping you locked you. in the same space. Yes, keeping you in the same space, around you, in you. I fully 100 agree with that. 100% agree. Okay. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you speak for a minute because I, I have a feeling I'm, I'm running this and monopolizing this. Oh, Sorry, no, guys. you're good. I you're good. Really get excited about these topics. And, you know, <laughs> this whole thing is a sharing of ideas and, and understanding. Even though we come from similar backgrounds, they're very, very different also. You know, and so that gives you two different perspectives. Um, so why don't you go ahead and share for a minute about bullshittery? I want to talk about bullshittery in the physical body just for a moment, because what we have is an avalanche and a war being put on us in, in our food, in social media, in, um, the words, the the 30,000 no's that we hear, but what these words, what everything is leading to and is is immediately doing to our foundation, our physical body, our foundation. This is our temple right here, okay? Mm -hmm. It is creating pathologies. It's creating pathologies of the mind. It's like ADD and ADHD. And a lot of the things that kids are diagnosed with, I feel are preventable. Oh yeah. Entirely. Misdiagnosis. Check, check, check. All over the place. Well, see, this is why it's called dis-ease. Let's be clear, sister. Yeah. dis-ease, okay? In every respect of the word. You've gotten those wonderful diagnoses of things that are supposedly wrong with you. (laughs) Lord knows I've had enough of those diagnoses shoved down my throat by Western medicine. But, you know... It's disease. You can recover from it. And you're absolutely right. When you start to get off that bullshittery train, your physical health does improve. 
your stress levels go down. Those dis-ease things that you've had, like the ADHD, the ADD, the schizophrenia. Okay, so let's switch it now to physical ailments, okay? The arthritis, the gout, the extra weight gain, the stress, the high cholesterol. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I can keep going and going and going. Right. But my point is they are all dis-ease. It becomes better. And after all, <laughs> aren't you here to have a life of wonderful, amazing experiences? I'm here. We are all here to thrive, to grow, to be in a state of cosmic bliss. Oh, my goodness. Because beyond the bullshittery is this new terrain called the universe has your back. What do you want to do with your life? Mm -hmm. And the universe, by the way, can turn off all of those pathological disease triggers. That's the big takeaway on this because the bullshittery keeps you keeps you locked into them. Mm -hmm. Even the genetic. So what I'm finding right? is, oh, any, any genetic, um, anything environmental, you can actually turn off histamine responses. Um, and as a medical intuitive, the body talks to us all the time. Mm -hmm. Adrenals, for instance, sound metal on metal breaks. It's the most annoying sound when someone is in, in adrenal insufficiency. It's like all four tires being on metal, metal. Got it. It's the most annoying sound. Kidneys, every, every part of the body has a sound. But what we're hearing is the programming and the bullshittery because the body imbalance does not have these sounds. These are, these are abnormal sounds. And this is not how we were wired when we came into the world. I agree. And, but we get passable shittery and we break this programming and we are free and clear 100%. Now we're in our own world. Amen, sister. And we create our own reality. Now, did you know there has been scientific studies actually that go along with what you just said? These people have gone in with ailments and they've been diagnosed with these <clears throat> diseases, shall we say. <laughs> and, you know, they've had conductive tests like MRIs and ultrasounds and, you know, all sorts of things, right? And they started dealing with the underlying problems. And that interference and the electricity of the cells disappeared. The cells started to respond better, healthier, more active, more vibrant once they started dealing with those inner issues, that bullshittery that had crept into their life. And you have to understand, guys, for everyone, it could be very different, okay? We all experience similar things, and yet for every one of us, because we were on our own journey and walk our own path, it is very, very different because it is based on our own perceptions, our thoughts, and our feelings. Amen, sister. You're preaching, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. Oh, I know, honey. <laughs> this is why I said we have to get this out because <laughs> you guys got to understand, we sit here and we talk about... The, the issues going on in our lives and we support each other through the bullshittery right and we give each other advice 100%. on how to climb out of that stench of eternal or the, the um hmm, bog of eternal stench that's the words i'm looking for there Ooh, yeah that's powerful the bog of eternal stench <laughs> well think about it though i mean you start behaving as a sheeple you stay in that low vibration that victim mentality that you know bullshittery in life constantly gets to you then that's what it is your life in, becomes that in fact they're now discovering in neuroscience um that it takes six seconds you have six seconds from the time someone let's say someone says something too critical and they're saying it just to be me okay or just to be controlling you have six seconds to reprogram yourself before that takes root in your physical, in your mind, body, and spirit. But it lands first in a crazy way in your neuroplasticity. 
it takes away from your neuroplasticity. You have six seconds. And if you, if you actually sit down and count one, two, three, four, five, six, and see what a short window of time you have to say, I don't buy what that person has to say. That's bullshittery. I'm going to put this in its place instead. Mm -hmm. Stop, pause, delete, rewind. I get it. As, you know, by the time it takes you to say stop, delete, rewrite, that six seconds has passed. And we yes. are not taught to even be observant of it. We are taught to take it without Vaseline <clears throat> up the arse, shall we say. Ooh, <laughs> that is very true and descriptive. <laughs> but you know, but and, that's what it feels like sometimes. Yeah, it's that that dagger straight to the heart, man. And all you can do is just go, ow. Okay, you made your point, man. Just, okay. I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about you. I don't want to look at you. Just be gone. But you can't say that because that only makes it worse. And so you just keep taking blow after blow after blow. Having been in a physically abusive relationship, having been in emotionally abusive relationships, having been in spiritually abusive relationships, I will tell you that once those blows start coming and you are wide open and accepting it, guys, that becomes your identity whether you realize it or not. And getting past that bullshittery to even find out who you are. It's a challenge. It is something I would not wish on anyone, but I am here if you need someone who has gone through it. Because I understand climbing out of that bullshittery, and guys understand we are going to do many, many episodes on climbing out of the bullshittery. We're just talking some general basics about what bullshittery in life is today. It's important, but... A lot of people go through different forms. You don't, it's not just about people can be abused in many different ways. Abuse of power is, is rampant. You look at our, you look at governmental structures, abuse of power, okay? The haves and the haves nots and what have you. So much bullshittery. But I even see, I'll even see the way that people are rewarded in society for behaving certain ways is is another form of bullshittery it's a and it is it's like i was in the store the other day there's a mother with two kids and one one girl is sit, standing in line like she's supposed to and the other kid is in the cart trying to jump up and down in the little seat right she's buckled in so she says oh honey would you like to get a candy bar to the one girl to the girl that's jumping up and down in the seat and being herself she says, if you'd been a good girl, you'd be getting one too. Yeah. Whoa. I, I took, I was behind them in line and I was like, oh, me, OMG, I can't believe I just missed this. But what I did was just send a big shot of I love you to that little girl. I was jumping up and down because she was excited to be out with her mom and her sister. The joy I'm of sure life. The she, thought she was doing the right thing. Please understand that. Oh, I thought 100%. she was doing the right thing, okay? We are not criticizing anybody's parenting skills. Oh, no. It, this it's is... just <clears throat> more examples of bullshittery, shall we say, on every single level that invades every single aspect of our lives since birth, whether we realize it or not. Is, is that a she fair was... sum up? That's fair because she was doing the best she could. She was doing what she had been taught by her mother and her mother before her and her mother before her mm -hmm. that you know you give a kid something yummy to eat when they behave themselves that's programming and that's part of the bullshittery mm -hmm. among many other ways but yes okay <laughs> so we do not want to keep talking somebody's ear off about all of this stuff especially nope. since this is our first episode Honey, I am so grateful that you are here doing this with me. And I am so grateful <laughs> to all of you out there in Thank you. the land watching, whether it be morning, noon, or night. 
So as promised, we're going to tell you how you can get in touch with us. And if you need help for specific bullshittery in your life, we can definitely help you. We are also going to be available to take general questions and this way. Um, and what's going to happen is if you have some bullshittery that you need help dealing with, by all means, reach out to us because we will keep everything private and confidential. Your secret is safe with us, but we will put it in generalized terms for the example, because I promise you, you're not the only one out there that's got this issue. Okay. So you can reach me by either PM or you can email me at lynn.celestialgardens at gmail.com. I'm going to put my link in the description and it's also going to be here at the end of the video. And my darling Shiraz, how can people reach you? You can reach me at spiritblossompsychics.com. I have a contact form. And at my email address of Shiraz at um, spiritblossompsychics.com. And that is also going to be at the end of this broadcast. Please, please contact us. Don't struggle by yourself. We are here to say that, there, that you can move past the bullshittery but it doesn't hurt to reach out to someone who's been working through it, recognizing it and deleting it and putting in new files for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honey, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. So thank you for that. Thank you for tuning in all of you out there. And remember you get what everybody else gets. You get a life. How you use it is up to you. Quit being a wallflower. It's time to start living your dreams.